Howdy, homesteaders. Uh, you're probably wondering what I'm up to today. We're going to butcher some meat rabbits. Because the highway noise was so bad, I decided to go ahead and do a, a narration over this video. Uh, right here, as you can see, the rabbit's been properly dispatched with the pellet gun. And I recommend a good pellet gun so it does the job effectively. I'm now just dunking it in water. Uh, this uh, wets down the fur, makes it a little bit easier to work with. So you're not getting tufts of fur everywhere. It's a cold day. I might probably should have soaked it a little longer than that. And now I'm taking off the, the feet. Some people like to take off the feet afterwards, after taking off the skin, but I think it works better for me to take the feet off first. That way when I go to take the skin off, it just comes right off. I'd rather just take care of it right up front. Uh, the meat cleaver I'm using is a Japanese meat cleaver. It's actually not weighted very well it's it could be heavier but it's what I had for the day for the most part I did an all right job it's just if it was a little bit heavier it would have been easier taking the rest of the feet off let's put it in the waste bucket as you can see I'm doing the tabletop method on the back of a truck It's actually raining outside. I'm actually underneath uh, an eave of one of the outbuildings at our property. So I'm not getting wet. It's cold and rainy that day. So I'm wearing my jacket. And you see a better method here just a moment when I go to take the head off here. I just put it right there in the joint right there. And then use a hammer to just drive it on through. And that turned out to be a pretty good method. And now uh, you turn it over to where you have the back of the animal facing up. You pull up the skin away from the body, and you're just going to cut that loose skin straight up to open up a hole. So you can start pulling the skin off. And it takes a lot of muscle. you got to put a lot of muscle into it. you got to really pull on it hard. But it just rips and tears the rest all the way around. And if you just pull on it, it will just rip and tear away from your two parts you're pulling apart. You go all the way around. And once you get the top and bottom separated, you just pull the top and bottom off. It does require a lot of strength. This is the uh, tabletop method. It's uh, alternative to hanging it up. Although I'd like to do a comparison to see which one I like better. Uh, but this was just... Uh, what I decided to do this day. You pull it right off. There's no feet there. There's no head there. It just pulls right off. And then for the bottom side, same thing is pull the feet out. Or what used to be, <laughs> where the feet used to be. Just pull it out. And once you get the feet pulled out, the only thing is the tail. And they just careful with a knife. Uh, you can just cut the tail right off, uh, cutting in between where the bones are. So now it's properly skinned. So we're going to go ahead and open up the cavity and take all the insides out. Now what you want to do is follow this line up the belly. And be careful not to pu push your knife in too deep. You don't want to pierce anything inside. And you just pull up, and the skin just follows the blade, and you just pull it away from everything, so it makes it easier to get through there. I'll just show it again. And I basically just used the best of my footage from the four rabbits I butchered that day. And when you get up this far, you just 
push it on through to the where the neck is and there's a separation between the ribs that you just cut that gristle comes right through now when you pull this apart don't pull it apart too much you don't want to break the bones you just want to open it up a little bit so you get your fingers in there to pull out the, the throat and all that stuff that's in there and then you also want to uh, pull out the liver and you just grab a hold of it get a good hand on it and then it just pulls right out so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, cut on the belly a little bit and pull it right back down to where the the legs come together and be careful not to cut yourself you put your finger in between in that hole and you pull the legs together it gives you leverage and you put it over your waste bucket and this is where you scrape out everything on the inside and you just grab a hold with your hands and as best you can and just grab a hold of it and you just push it straight down just like that it's relatively relatively easy this part you don't need to use knives to take the insides out you just use your hands that way you don't risk rupturing anything now this is the kidney and I'm also going to pull the other kidney out. Take a look at it. And that's most of it right there. There's not much left. All that's left now is uh, to clear out between the legs there. There's a little tube in there you need to remove. Uh, it's best to crack that, like I'm cracking it right there. That way, once you crack it, you just uh, cut in between the bones. And then you just reach in there and scrape out the tube that's in there with your thumb. That's what I'm doing. You might get some droppings that come out, but that's just part of it. And you're just trying to, you know, clear it out with your fingers. If you have to, you can just cut little pieces off if you need to. And that's really it. I'm just going over it now and I'm just removing extra little pieces. It's pretty much, I hope this really helps you out. I hope this makes it a little easier for you. Uh, if you don't have a way of hanging up your rabbit, uh, this day we couldn't find ours. So we decided to use this tabletop method. Uh, you don't need any anything to hang the rabbit up if you use this method. Uh, like I said, it takes some strength to get the skin off, but that's really the hardest part. Once you get the skin off, the rest of it's pretty easy. And once you've done several rabbits, you kind of get the hang of it. So it's really, really pretty simple. And now I can put meat in my freezer. From here, you'd put it in the cooler uh, with ice and vinegar water. And that just helps to kill any bacteria that might be present. And uh, once you let it soak in there for at least an hour, uh, I usually keep them in there and I, I do each animal and until they're all butchered and put in there, then I leave it in there for at least an hour. And then you can take it in the house and uh, take it out and uh, do some further processing, cutting it up and then bagging it up, put it in the freezer. It's, uh, it's pretty much like uh, meat you might buy at the store. It's all properly ready to go for your kitchen.